This brings back memories. I so love the Llama Tree Festival and uh, this group, I think it was like Romanian Gypsy Music and they were on the garden stage. Now what you see behind is a garden that's painted onto the backdrop of the stage and so I think that's very part, much part of the Llama Tree so I'm going to just wet the background and we're going to drip in some colours. His suit's quite dark um, I think it can take it. So we sort of give an indication of that stage. That's where it was. That's the memories that I want to create. I also like all this chaos that's below and I'm also going to leave some of that in there. Right, so let's just go for the basic shapes. We use a burnt umber for this sort of house that's painted there. Not in detail. We've got it wet. So what I'm hoping will happen is that it will run a little bit of a roof there. So it'll be quite blurry, there's something underneath. And then there's a lot of green. So there is a tree, that could be some sepia. I'm going to bring that over a little bit, maybe take it the other way. I think that might be tidy. Take that out. And then lemon yellow, impression blue, great colours for trees and greenery. So I'll put that there. As you can see, we are really understating this. I'm keeping it a lot softer than it actually is. A bit more yellow maybe for this bit here. That can take it because most of the stuff is quite dark. Come through there. A bit of raw sienna as we come out. little bit of sepia here and there, that's for that roof. And maybe if that's going a bit dark, let's just soften that. and that will dry quite light. So really all we can do at this minute is to just let that get really dried. Then we can work out how dark to go behind. Uh, I've left a bit of a white gap there. Let's just fill that in. That probably won't look so good in the scheme of things later. Okay, so time for coffee while that dries. Now this little guy was quite tiny, so that's why the instrument looks so big. Let's start with his hat. I think the colour that it is, is probably a good colour. It's a little bit of very washed out raw sienna. Just a hint of colour there. And then I'm going into some burnt umber and a touch of sepia. Just let that touch that colour. underneath the hat and that sort of that just softens out it's a, it's a nice soft edge good skin colour light red with a hint of sepia and just pop that in Somebody, it's lighter on the front of his face and the back. And then I can 
go in with that darker shape in a minute. His hair's quite dark. So let's just get some sepia in there and that can run a little bit. Just want the movement. It's music, it's sort of, it's atmospheric. There's hardly any shadow on his shirt, but there is just a tiny bit. So let's go with a colour we've used before. Let's use a little bit of Prussian blue. And it's just darker just there. And back to the skin colour. Just look when you draw these hands for the basic shape. We don't have to worry about all the fingers. It's just the shape. It's very light, that one light's hitting it and the instruments there be quite dark behind. That should run quite nice if I just add a little bit of sepia in there. Just run that through. I can always put a few finger marks in a little bit later. Right, now for the suit. Very dark there and then light coming down that way. So I'm going to go for my Prussian Blue. Love this mix. Rich sepia. I want it slightly on the blue side. And so it's lighter here. I think it could be just a tad lighter than that even. That's it. Most of that sleeve is quite light. Pull that out. And then underneath his arm it's all very dark. So then back into that lovely gungy dark thick mix we've made. And so that sort of comes around like that on his shoulder. It's a little bit on the inside that's darker. And we will tidy all of this up when we put our definite dark shapes in in a while. Now because that arm is going to get lost, because it's the same colour as underneath, it's just, I'm just going to leave a little thin line down there. Oh, there's a bit of shirt showing there, I didn't notice. It's in shadow. So in while when that's dry we can just add a little bit of shadow into that that's not a problem and then the trousers start about there again leave a little white line it just makes sense of it it makes it nicer crinkly trousers i think they're a little bit too big for him don't you? and the same here that could be just a little line there so that we know And a little bit of that leg showing just there. That comes sort of up there. Alright, the shoes are red. Let's leave him with red shoes. Why not? So, Lizarine Crimson. And we can't really see much of what's going on, so all we do is just do a few shapes. I don't want to confuse you so what we're going to do is finish one thing at a time so I'm going to add the dots that I can see onto this little trap. I'm going to start with some sepia with a very dark line there so let's get that back in. And just a little mark under his nose wouldn't hurt to put that in under the chin. Oh, no shadows. That just stands out a little bit more. I think the hair could come down a bit there. And maybe a little bit of shadow on the fingers. Just the tip of the brush. She's using the 16 brush. Just those dark shapes that actually really make this. And then I'm mixing the Prussian Blue and the Sepia together for these lovely marks on the sleeves and just under there.
it's very definite sort of lines because of the crinkles. There's a few there, you can't really see too many, but we'll just make up a few to break it up. And a little dark shape under the shoes, but most of that's going to be hidden anyway. And make a little bit of a dark shape there. Right, on to this. This is fun to do. Right. I'm just taking off some of the Prussian blue and sepia that I've got on my brush and I'm going to go down that with it very watered down so it's sort of like the dirt that's left on my brush. And then into the edges, because it's quite a soft dark line, I'm going to run a thicker mix of the Prussian blue and the sepia. Um, it might even be worth doing that on a card because that will give me a nice straight line and it's easier. So just rub that along your card and then take that up and that should run a little bit because that's wet and then do the same the other side but a thinner line. And as we come down, that just gets a little bit thinner, thicker, so just tease that out. That's running very nicely. Up to there, and then there's some dark bits in between. Just pop those in now. So that made sense to do that whilst that was on the brush. Now, if you look at the picture, there are some very lights and some very darks. Now, a really good instrument colour for violins, cellos, double bass is a burnt sienna. So first of all, I'm going to use a burnt sienna, quite watered down. And to pull that out, it's lots of water, because that wood is just so shiny. Don't worry about any strings at the moment. They can be put in later. Now I want the lights and the darks to be very definite. It's quite light there. Got that definite shape that comes through. We always pull some of that out if we want to to keep that really light. Sounds like I've got a woodpecker, doesn't it, in the background? We get all sorts of noises here. Right, now for the darker, thicker mix. So exactly the same colour. Take that in and that can be sort of quite runny. That will keep it soft. Go over that because we'll paint over that in a minute. Get the shape. So to there. So that's the same colour. Doesn't it look different when one's darker and one's lighter? Really strange. And then there's a bit of a reflection there, which also shows up that sleeve quite nicely. Something going on there. Hardly any water, lots of paint. That's quite a dark edge there. That's definite there. Oops, that one's okay. Yeah, I think that's going to look nice and shiny. So now time to just leave that to dry. I just love it when these darks go in and it starts really coming together. Let's just get some of that top bit in before we forget. Okay, now for some sepia on its own. Just drip that in there. Underneath that will just show up the darks. There's something dark there. Beautiful, and then just with the tip of my brush, there's a dark outline. Which is really nice because that will really tidy it up. It's actually there. It's a very fine line. We've got a dark shadow there, wow. Tip of the brush. Mm 
Oh, that's just coming alive. And whilst I think about it, I'm just going to put a little bit of shadow in here because that's just a little bit too light. Let's get a size 10 brush. A little bit of um, any colour for shadow. It doesn't matter what it is. Of course it's pale. There we go. Let's take out some of that water before it runs. Blue and sepia mixed together very thick. Let's get these shapes in here. Big dot that comes around little. Little dry brush marks if we can and get the shape of that in. But so dark that it didn't matter that we didn't leave anything behind. Um, a bit of shadow under the bridge, we'll paint that in in a minute. A bit of shadow coming down there that we can just smudge. Mm. Okay, let's do the bridge. That's sort of more burnt umber, but I've not washed my brush too well. So let's just pop in that shape. That sort of comes around like that. That's fine card and we're not going to use white strings we're going to go dark you don't have to go exactly the same and these will show up better we don't have to do every single one either so just paint along that edge and then we can run one up there two and then down to that bridge sort of come down like that. And your brain fills in the rest. It's as easy as that. I think we'll have another bit for that mullet. I quite like all these bits and pieces that are randomly going along. So again, scrape some of that down there nice and dark. And this time, we pull it to the side. Just make it thicker. So plenty of paint. You can keep loading if you need to. And that makes it quite random along here. That's what it sort of stood on. And then fill in any of the sort of chunky bits. Uh, things are going on there. Don't have to see exactly. That really doesn't matter. And I think Prussian blue would be a good colour for this sign box. Just try brush marks if you can. It's just filling in that space. And what I do like are all these cords that come off of everything. So just the tip of the brush, just run that down. There's so many of the things. I think this just adds to the whole, whole experience. And I think some red ones would be really good. There's some red. And some very loopy ones. A bit of red there doesn't hurt. Uh, maybe we need to do an edge of the stage. And I'm thinking a cobalt blue might be quite good for that. And if we just run, oh, I've got a lot of red in that, but that doesn't matter. Happy accidents. We love happy accidents. So back into the cobalt blue, run that through. So sort of tie that up there. We don't want gaps, there's boxes and things on here. There's just so much going on and we need to get some of that blue somewhere else. So there is a table there, why not put that in? It fills in some of the space. Yeah, I hope you've enjoyed doing this too. It's really nice revisiting um, older things that you've done. I used to teach this a lot on the cruise ships, but I've not painted it for a few years. 
and it was really good fun to revisit it and I think sometimes you put a different mark on what you did in the first place you see things differently you've experienced things differently in the years and yeah it just comes out differently so thank you for watching Thank you.